Welcome back to Weekly Wolverine Podcast. Now let's talk about the Detroit Pistons and their game last night. So it was a little bit of a sloppy game against the Portland Trailblazers, but the thing is you always expect that because, you know, it's summer league, guys haven't played. We literally had a guy playing named Jalen Duran who was on the team for an hour before this game started. <laughs> and really, the main takeaway is Troy Weaver did a great job in this draft, and I think that this game confirmed it. Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey both look like they're going to be ready to start in game one. I, I know a lot of people are saying that Noel is going to be the starting center. You know, maybe Isaiah Stewart. I don't know. I think Jalen Duran is the most talented forward on this team, and it's not even close. He's easily got the best athletic ability. He's already got the build of an NBA center, and he's only 18 years old. And are there still parts of his game he needs to develop? Sure. But for only being on the team for an hour, and for him to get three alley-oops, get, get that block, which is pretty emphatic, Jalen Duran showed that he can be an impact player almost immediately. And his floor is a guy that can be a great rim protector and get a few dunks a game. And I think that's a pretty darn good floor. So kudos to Troy Weaver for getting that pick at 13, giving up a bag of peanuts for him. I don't think there's any surprise that those two guys, Ivy and Duran, are going to be special. Now for the other parts of the game. Saban Lee, I think, is in trouble. The stat line didn't look too bad last night, but overall, just the game flow with him is absolutely terrible. And everyone will say, oh, Killian Hayes is not an offensive threat. But the truth is, with Killian Ga Hayes, Killian Hayes, the game seems to flow a little bit better. You know, the ball seems to move a little bit better. Uh, the dribble driving doesn't, one dribble drive doesn't result in the end of a possession. I think Killian Hayes is doing a very nice job. And that was the kind of game last night when there were 63 fouls. It's hard to establish a game flow. I think Casey, after the first quarter, seeing... Hayes get four assists and really do a great job facilitating the game. He said, all right, Saban Lee, here's the keys. Show me what you can do. Give me a reason to keep you on this roster. And Saban Lee, unfortunately, it's drive inside, maybe get trapped, maybe get stopped in his tracks, get off balance, throw up a terrible shot or turn the basketball over or get bailed out and not really, not really do anything. It's clear to me. Saban Lee's basketball IQ and his sense on the court is just not very good. And in year three, that's disappointing. The dude has talent. The dude has great athleticism. But when he can't rely on the athleticism, he doesn't have other parts of his game. Whereas Killian Hayes has shown that he has developed other parts of his game. So I think it's very possible Saban Lee doesn't make this roster. And he could be traded or even cut. The fact is, Corey Joseph has a much better feel at that point guard spot, and it's going to be Cunningham, Hayes, and Kojo. I don't think Saban Lee really has a place on this roster. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up with you. I think those three are enough, and Saban Lee is probably going to get traded. Uh, other thoughts on the game. I was kind of disappointed the young guys didn't get some more minutes, and I don't mean Jay and Ivy and Duran. I mean the guys like Bayheim, I didn't really feel like he got a great opportunity. You know, he had a couple shots, he missed him. But to me, you know, you got to give him a little bit more of an opportunity. Especially if you liked his three-point shooting in college, which I personally liked. And you want to set him up as a shooter, you know, get some looks for him. Maybe that's an overreaction, and we still have three summer league games left. And a lot of these guys have only played together for a week, so... The play isn't really crisp yet, and maybe that's why Bayheim wasn't getting minutes. So, last thought. I think Braxton Key can not only make this roster, but could earn that second spot for a small forward uh, behind Sadiq Bay. I think Braxton Key's story is absolutely incredible. Go going undrafted, making it to the G League, only playing six minutes overall with the 76ers out on a 10-day contract. Troy, we Troy Weaver really has found a right. Oh God, I can't speak. Troy Weaver has really found a diamond in the rough with Braxton Key. Is he the greatest offensive threat? No, but he's definitely not terrible. And when he makes bad plays offensively, he'll make up for it with a bucket, you know, shooting from outside. Pretty good at shooting the basketball. But the main thing I liked about him is he is willing to play defense. For whatever reason, 
his body is just set up so that he can grab rebounds, even though he's only six foot eight. He's got that thick build, and he also doesn't really get beat to the hoop either. You know, anytime someone drives, he often stops them in their tracks. Uh, did a nice job in the interior, box guys out all day, and that's the kind of stuff we need on this team. And also can shoot a little bit from the outside. So this is not good news for Isaiah Livers, or it could be, because this is a wake up call that you know, hey. You've got all this talent, but you got to knock down those shots. You know, if you're Isaiah Livers, you can't go one of eight from the three-point line. You just can't. I know it's just game one, and maybe that's an overreaction, but Key and Livers, they're going to be competing for that second spot. And I think both will see minutes this season, and I think both will get significant minutes. But who's going to be the first guy on the bench when Sadiq Bey comes off the floor? Is it going to be Key or is it going to be Livers? And I'd say round one goes to Key. Very impressive for a guy that was undrafted and this franchise seems to do well with undrafted players please be ben wallace <laughs> he's not ben wallace but we can only hope all right coming up next the michigan wolverines are in a disastrous spot and i'm pretty livid coming up next michigan football's recruiting woes